Welcome to Talent Fest 21. Hello, I'm Reefa from Wired Sussex. Now that we're emerging from a year of lockdown and uncertainty, it's time to start planning the future for digital businesses. How can we best connect job seekers, graduates, career switchers and returners to work from diverse backgrounds and outside of our Brighton bubble with rewarding and fulfilling work? So year round, we've got a jobs board where you can find the latest digital media and tech opportunities. And we're hosting a five day event this week to boost our region's thriving digital industry, helping businesses thrive and hire and nurture the most talented people, the people we need to grow and deliver great work. Thanks so much to our sponsors, Plus Accounting, Legal and General and MPB. And thank you to our supporters, Make Real. Hope you enjoy this session. Check out our website to see what other exciting events we have on this week. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to this talk on kickstarting your digital career. My name is Alice Reeves. I'm co-founder and director of the Joyful and the Joyful Academy. We exist to support businesses who have big visions and want to make a positive impact on the world with their brand, marketing and campaigns. I'm here today to share some tips with you around how to get started with a career in digital. And what we're going to cover in this session are, first of all, getting really clear on what you want from a role, from a company and from your career. Then we're going to look at building your online profile. Then we're going to look at using jobs boards, jobs boards, so ways in which you can find the opportunities that are out there. Networking tips, because that's a big part of making connections and finding opportunities. How to be proactive, which is a great thing that employers want to see. And then what employers are actually looking for when it comes to finding people to join their teams. So first of all, getting clear on what you want. Some really helpful questions to ask yourself are, where do you see yourself in the next three years? So can the role that you're looking for, the types of roles that you're looking for, provide a foundation for you to learn and develop your skills, whether with that company or eventually moving to another company in the future? So thinking about where you, where you want to get to in the future can help you decide whether the role you're going for is going to be the, the most useful stepping stone for you long term. What's important to you? So this is all about your personal values. When you think about what matters to you as an individual, what are the values that it's really important for an organization to share? You know, is it authenticity? Is it kindness? Is it giving back? Because people are most happy in jobs and increasingly people are searching for jobs with organizations that they know is going to align with the type of things that are most important to them in the world. What do you want from a job? So is the job you're going for, is the kind of job you're looking for going to fit with your lifestyle? Do you need flexible working? Do you want to remote work? Do you want extra support and benefits that um, that include things like childcare, health insurance, you know, what, what really matters to you within a jobs package, that's going to really help you within your search as well. And what sort of people do you want to work with? So this is a really important one. If you're a massively outgoing, extroverted individual that loves socialising, then you're probably going to work want to work with a team that are really sociable, that want to hang out outside of work. You know, if you are a person that really, really cares about innovating and developing stuff and being creative and giving back, then you're going to want to work with those kind of people that share that vibrant energy. So. A really, really great way to do that is to check out content online where businesses are sharing content from their teams. So, for example, the Wide, Wide Sussex has just launched a Meet the Team series where they're talking to various member organisations to give you an insight into what kind of people work there and whether you'd be a good fit for their organisation. And then finally, what opportunities are you looking for? So 
does the role give you an opportunity to progress? Does it give you an opportunity to develop and refine your skills? Again, really, really important because this is going to help you narrow your search and only go into jobs, uh, go into interviews for jobs where you are really, really genuinely passionate and genuinely aligned with what the role and the company is offering. So next, building your online profile. Now, there are so many ways you can do this. For example, social media is a hugely, hugely effective way of building yourself a profile online. Um, so some tips are get on LinkedIn, first of all, if you're not. Um, a lot of companies use LinkedIn for recruitment and for, for searching for candidates. So make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date with your late all of your latest experience. Include as much detail as you would include on a CV. Write a solid personal statement that tells people what you're looking for. Get a professional headshot and make sure that's looking really good and professional and it's filled out in as much detail as you can, aligned to the type of experiences that you're looking for. You can use your bio on LinkedIn to um, write almost like a personal statement saying what experience you've had, what you're looking for, whether you're currently open to opportunities. That's a really great way of communicating what it is you need, because, yes, you want to be searching for all of these opportunities. You want to have an online profile where employers can go and see all of the great stuff you're up to. But if you're putting stuff out there online as well, then you're also increasing the chance of those opportunities finding you. Engage with and share content from other people in the sector that you want to get into. So following these sorts of people on social media, signing up to their mailing lists, getting to know what they're up to and engaging with and sharing that content publicly can help you build connections. And when you share um, when you share knowledge, when you share blog posts that are written by other people that you think are really great within the sector, you're also helping to position yourself as an expert and a knowledgeable authority in that space as well. Make sure your personal accounts are private. Now, this is a big one. Of course, you can put whatever you like on your social channels, but if it's public, just bear in mind that that information is out there for future employers to see. Not all of them are gonna care, but some will. So anything that you don't want a potential employer to see, make sure that that is private, that that is locked down and that you're sharing with your friends and family only. And then watch what you share as well you know if you are for example if you've got a twitter account that's just absolutely full of complaints that positions you as quite a negative person you know it's not necessarily offensive but just bear in mind that potential employers will be looking at the kind of content that you're putting out online and if you're coming across as aggressive or confrontational in any way that can potentially ring some alarm bells. So I know it's really tempting to kind of have a rant online. I've done it myself, but I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be conscious of what you're putting out there and what potential employers may be seeing. And then showcase your work in an online portfolio. So LinkedIn, for example, gives you the opportunity to upload files and links within your CV to direct people to work. If you're a graphic designer, you might want to sign up for something like Behance to put an online portfolio. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, you paying to host your own website. There's so many free services out there. Um, if you're a writer, putting some of your work on a blog is also a really great idea anything that you can put together to build your online profile, build your online presence and give employers something to see so they can learn about you is really valuable. So now let's look at finding opportunities. So first of all, it's a great idea to sign up to dedicated jobs boards like Wired Sussex. And most of these will allow you to set up alerts for particular jobs as well. So that anything that fits your criteria is coming into your inbox for you to take a look at. You might also want to sign up with a specialist recruitment company for your sector. So there are plenty out there, like, for example, Clockwork Talent um, specialises in, in the digital sector and digital recruitment. So that can be a really, really great move as well, because then they will find the positions that are suited to you. 
network with people in the industry now this is so so important networking for me personally has been one of the most valuable things i have done for my career whether that's through local chambers of commerce local groups like wired sussex so many organizations out there have um have events which are specific to your industries so go out there look for those networking opportunities meet people in your industry and get the word out there tell people what you're looking for and then as we've said in building your profile share your work online put what you're doing out there and use social media to tell people what opportunities you're looking for i've seen some really brilliant um, posts on linkedin from people who have maybe finished with one job they're looking for new opportunities and they put out there on linkedin just in a post what it is they're looking for and they've had job offers through that so don't be afraid to go out there and tell people what kind of work you're looking for, because people are really, really willing to help you within so many of these online communities. Now, networking can be super, super scary, especially if you haven't done it before. Obviously, we've been in a pandemic recently, so networking events haven't really been happening apart from online. So I imagine there's a lot of people who are feeling a bit anxious about getting out there and back into the networking scene. So here are some tips if you're new to networking that could potentially be really helpful to you. Um, first of all, don't worry if you're nervous. Loads of people are. In fact, the majority of people I know absolutely hate networking. They think it sounds a bit icky. They they don't know how to just go up to people and go, oh, hi, this is what I do. Um, so don't worry if you're nervous. So many people are. Own that you're nervous. Tell people that you're nervous and they'll completely relate to you. So don't, don't worry about that at all. Um, a thing you can do if you are nervous that's really helpful is to get in touch with event hosts in advance. So most people who run events are super, super friendly. Tell them that you're nervous. Tell them that you're new to networking. Let them know what you're looking for, how they can help you, who you want to connect with. They can potentially set up some introductions or point you towards some opportunities, tell you some people that you can get in touch with. That's what they're there for. That's why they're running these events. They want to foster these connections. So, so definitely be open with them about who you want to meet and what you're looking for. Um, find relevant industry events. So Wired Sussex, as we said on the previous slide, has a brilliant events calendar. There are events and communities for almost every sector. For example, if you want to learn about programming, Code Bar is a brilliant event to get yourself along to. Wired Sussex do so many different meetups, um, whether it's social, whether it's breakfast, to hear someone talk, to learn about specific topics. So really looking for those events around specific topics that interest you, that are relevant to you, um, because we're so lucky here in Sussex in that there are events and communities for pretty much every sector and subsector within digital. So there is no shortage of events and opportunities to engage. After networking events, follow up with the people that you've met. You know, everyone's going to be mingling. You'll probably meet dozens of people. So it's a really great idea to, you know, take their business card or take their details and then follow up with them on social media or drop them an email the next day so that they don't forget you. Um, a lot of the time, I once I when I've been to a networking event, I find that LinkedIn Messenger is a really great way to connect with someone, shoot them a request, tell them how great it was to meet them, um, and then you can get a conversation going on LinkedIn. And then don't be afraid to tell people what you're looking for and why you're there so if you're new to the sector go out there say to people look, i'm new to the sector i've just qualified in this or i'm training in this i'm looking for opportunities in this this and this when people know what you're looking for they'll be able to help you and my experience of the digital community in sussex is that most people will be more than happy to help you more than happy to give you a leg up so don't be nervous about being honest with people, whether you're at the start of your career or not, about what you're looking for and and how they can help you. And then finally, what are employers looking for? Now, I think it's important before I dig into these points to say that, you know, employers are not a homogenous sector. So employers are going to be looking for a variety of different things. But 
these are the kind of core things that no matter what job you're going for, this is a really, these are really, really great things to practice. So the first of all is proactivity, showing your initiative. So if you want to work in um, coding, have you got examples of that online? If you're a graphic designer, have you got an online portfolio? You know, have you gone in? Have you researched the organization? Have you found specific examples of things that you've done that relate to what the organization is up to, to their vision, to their mission? You know, do your research, show your initiative in any way you can before you engage in that initial conversation and it really will pay off. As we've covered earlier, build your online profile. They will Google you. They will try and find you on social. They will try and look for you. So give them something to find and make sure that it's aligned and relevant to the opportunities that you're seeking. A really important thing is to tailor your application to the job description. So never just send a generic CV you are going to want to tweak your CV, tweak your personal statement to align to all of the specifications within a job description. So when you look at a job description and it says all of the things that they're looking for, how can you tailor your personal statement, tailor your CVs with specific examples of how you meet that criteria? And if you don't specifically meet that criteria, what experience do you have that shows that particular skill that's transferable? Now, there's a really, really important thing to remember that a job application is a wish list. It's not a requirement list. When an organization writes a job application, what they're thinking is, if I could have the perfect person for this job, this is what they would be. They will be willing to compromise on some of it. There are so many jobs that I've been for in the past where I haven't met every single point on the specification, but I've got to interview. And in a lot of cases, I've been hired, even when I didn't necessarily meet every single criteria, because once you're in front of them, once you're talking to them, once you're once you're meeting these employers, it is so much more about the type of person you are and whether they believe you can do the job. You know, any skill can be learned, but you can't change who you are. You can't change your personality and your attitude is going to be a much, much bigger determiner of whether you get a role than what your skills are. Give examples of your work. So even if they don't ask for it, this is an example of where you can show your proactivity. So what examples do you have of your work that backs up what you're saying about yourself in your CV and your cover letter? It's absolutely fine to send those alongside um, alongside your CV and cover letter in most cases. If someone doesn't ask for them up front, bear in mind you will probably be asked for examples of your work at some point. So make sure that you've got those in the bank, as it were, and you're prepared to share. Be enthusiastic. This is such an important point. Um, I'm going to share a little story of, of someone I interviewed who, you know, on paper, she was perfect for the job and she turned up and she was so kind of reserved. And I, I was talking to her after speaking to a couple of other people who are really like, yeah, yeah, the joyful. It's amazing. I can't wait to work for you. This is exactly the kind of organization. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I was so excited when I saw your job description. Da, da, da. And I was like, wow, you know, they really want to work for us. This is, you know, awesome to hear, you know, when it's, when it's a small company and it's, you know, and it's your business, when people are applying for a job, you really want to get the sense that they really care and buy into what you're about. So I was there being kind of bowled over by these people's enthusiasm. And then I had this this um, this woman come in who was completely qualified, really impressed with her CV. And she was very quite quiet and quite reserved, but answered all the questions perfectly. And then at the end of the interview, I said to her, now, is there anything that you want to share that you haven't shared yet? And she said, yes. I want you to know that I am extremely excited about this job. She says, I might not show it. That's not my personality. I might not be jumping in my seats. I might not be like waving my arms around, but she said, but I am so, so excited for this job. And I so want to work with you. And I would just absolutely love this opportunity. And I was like, that's amazing. And she got the job and she was brilliant and she worked with us for for quite a while and she was absolutely wonderful so just don't be afraid to show that enthusiasm 
And in line with that goes showing your personality. So, you know, don't put on a face when you go for a job that isn't you. Ultimately, you are going to be spending so much of your time in this place. You are going to be spending so much of your energy moving this organization forward, contributing to the team. You want your personality to fit there. You want to feel fully accepted. You don't want to have to put on a work face. So show your personality in your application, in your interviews. And remember that when you go for an interview, it's not just you being judged by the organization, by the, the people who are hiring you. This is your opportunity to see whether they're a good fit for your personality as well. So never be afraid to, to be yourself, because ultimately, once you start working there, you are going to be being yourself every day. You're not going to be putting on this interview act. So really bring your full self and see if you're a good fit for each other. Don't be afraid to have a laugh, have a joke if it's appropriate. Um, personally, having a laugh and a joke is really important to me. So I already know that someone who isn't up for that is not gonna be a good fit for, for working with me. So really, really important to, as I said at the top, every employer is looking for something different, but if you stick to these things, if you, if you stick to these points, if you look at these points before you apply for a job, before you go for an interview and be prepared with all of this, then this stands you in really good stead to really show who you are and what you can do and also get a sense of whether that value and that energy that you have is reciprocated by the organisation. And then finally, you can do it. You've got this. Making a career change, starting a career can be really, really intimidating. But hopefully this has given you some helpful tips, maybe made you feel a little bit less intimidated. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach me at alice at wearethejoyful.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at alice underscore Reeves, and you can find me on LinkedIn as well. If you wanted to follow the Joyful, the Joyful Academy, reach out to us if you're looking for careers in digital. I'm always open to hearing from people what you're looking for, what you can do, seeing if I can help. You can reach us at We Are The Joyful or at The Joyful Academy on social media. So best of luck with your career and let me know if you have any questions or if you feel like I can help in any way.